Hi, I'm Becky Mireles, and today I'm going to be talking about love. Uh, now, this sermon or uh, this word is actually um, piggybacking off of my sister Christina's first uh, word that she put out last week regarding love in the aspect of um, how love keeps you from sin. You know, when you, uh, you know, when you love somebody, are you going to be lying to them? No, you love somebody, you're going to be truthful with them. You know, are you going to steal from them if you love from them? You know, no, you're going to, if you love somebody, you're going to do everything you can to show them that you love them. And so that's what my sister Christina was talking about last week in her message about um, love. And so this week, I would like to continue that and talk about love in regards to um, reaching out to people and to, and to ministering and really bringing people to Christ. And um, to start, I'd like to share my testimony on how I came to Christ. Uh, because for a very long time, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't go to church. I didn't like church, uh, for the simple reason that every time I would go, I would face people that would tell me just very mean and judgmental things, you know, above all else, uh, that I'm a sinner and that the way I'm dressed was, you know, bad and ugly. And, you know, at the time I had a nose ring, so they're telling me how I'm bad for having that, you know? And so I would get, um... Of course, you get mad. You know, you go to a place to check it out. You hear all the time, you know, Jesus is love. God is love. And you walk into a place where everybody is like not showing love. <laughs> it makes you think hypocrites. You know what I mean? So um, a lot of times they would try to pray for me at these churches I would visit. And because they're telling me things like this, I would tell them, you know, get my get your hands off of me. You know, if I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, too. And. You know, I, you know, I, I would be like totally disrespectful and, and it would just not, um, it wasn't helping on bringing me to Christ. So for a very long time, I just, I stayed away from church and I didn't want to have anything to do with um, Christianity or Christian people because those were my experiences, you know, judgment mean, <laughs> And so um, I finally got invited to this little church called Lighthouse Christian Temple. And of course, at the time, you know, I was like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to, you know, it's going to be the same as every place, blah, blah, blah. You know, I had a real attitude about it because I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go through the whole judgment and this and that. Um, but finally, I, I gave in and uh, I went and I visited uh, Lighthouse for the first time. And uh, to my astonishment and my pleasant surprise, when I walked in the doors, they told me, hello, how are you? You know, it's good to see you. I'm glad to see you here. It's like, wait, you know, and, and that really took me aback because uh, unlike any other place, you know, they're telling me, hello, it's good to see you instead of like, hey there, why are you dressed like that? Why do you look like that? You know, and so that... Um, that right there made the big difference between me, uh, you know, just going to check out another random church and and uh, really going in to uh, learn about who who Jesus is, who God was, you know, what does he have for me? You know, up until that point, I felt so unworthy of God. You know, I felt so like, yeah, I've already messed up my life. This is it. And mind you, I'm like. Um, at that, by that time I was like 24, 25 and I had gone through a lot of, you know, even at a young age, gone through a lot, <laughs> you know, a lot of bad things. And, um, you know, it just, I, I'm sure you can identify with that feeling, you know, you just feel like all that God stuff is, is beyond you, you know, that you can't touch it. You're not good. You know what I mean? But all that changed for me, um, one night after service, Pastor Letty came to talk to me specially, you know, and, um, you know, I say specially like that because you, she didn't have to, you know, she could have done the nice, you know, hey, nice to see you. Hello, goodbye type of thing. Um, but she took the time to talk to me and ah, the thing that really turned my life around was she told me God has a purpose for your life. and. That's the first time I had ever heard anybody tell me that. She told me God has a purpose for your life. That changed my whole mind about God and about, you know, being more open to receiving Christ in my heart. You know, she told me 
It doesn't matter what you've done up until now. The first scripture that she showed me was 2 Corinthians 5.17 that says, Anyone who is in Christ and is a new creation, old things have passed, all has become new. And right away, not even being somebody who knows the Bible or knew anything of the Bible, that tells me like when you believe in Christ, he erases your past. He makes it like you're a brand new creature and, and, and you can act as such. You know, you don't have to be held down by the mistakes of your past. And so, boom, right there, that, that statement, God has a purpose for you, like, for your life. She opened my heart to, um, you know, listening to the message that my pastor was preaching the following Sunday about giving your life to Christ. And that Sunday, it was a Sunday in September of 2006. I walked up to the altar. I got on my knees and I told Jesus, um, I invited him to, into my heart. I said, please take over from here because I've messed up my life, God. You know, and it was as simple as that, as, you know, declaring my belief as Jesus Christ is the son of God. And since then, my life has completely changed. You know, um, I still mess up. I still, you know, make mistakes. But the difference is now um, I know that I don't have to stay stuck that way. I know that, um, you know, you can get up and repent. You know, you tell God, I'm sorry, and and I don't want to do this anymore. God, please help me. And you get up and you try every day to be better. And and that's that's what I got. That's my um, that's my testimony and my lesson that I got from giving my life to Christ. And one of the big important things that my pastor Letty also told me, you know, throughout the years of, of ministering and, and showing me and teaching me in Bible studies is she told me one day, you know, you're going to reach a point where, um, you know, you're going to uh, be in a position to help other women and bring other women um, to Christ through your testimony. And so that's the, that's the purpose of getting involved now with uh, making these videos is I want to reach out to everybody um, who may be, uh, you know, in a downtime in your life or hurting or, or anything, you know. Um, Christianity is not about judgment. Christianity is about love. To be a Christian means that we follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was our best example and is our best example of what it was to be a perfect person. Perfect in the way that he followed God. He loved. He forgave. He healed. You know, everything that the word of God says Jesus was and is. And that's what the Bible means to me. The Bible is a like a like a mirror. You know, you go through the scriptures and you learn about um, <clears throat> about how to become a better you. You know, the Bible doesn't give us a license to sit there and say, you're wrong, you're this, you're that. You know, it's not about that. It's about showing love to those who are lost in the world. That's what it means to be a light in the world. Because when everybody else sits there and judges you and calls you this, calls you that, Jesus Christ says, no. You may be imperfect, but I still love you. I died for you on the cross. You know, that dying alone was an act of love. You know, the greatest measure of a friend is to lay your life down for, for your friend. You know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's exactly what, um, what Jesus did because he loved us. So don't ever let anybody tell you because of the current state that you're in, that you can't come to God, that you're not worthy or even if you are a Christian and you mess up from time to time, you know, get up, repent and pick up your cross and keep moving forward. You know, um, that's my mission. And that's how I would like to reach people. You know, I can't tell you you're bad because of this. You're bad because of that. You know, dude, you know, <laughs> you already know what you're doing. What I want to do is show you uh, the love, you know, the patience, the kindness, you know. The everything that God says that love is, you know, love keeps no record of wrong. Love is not jealous, you know, and all the other attributes that the word of God says that love is none of those things is judgmental. 
So if Jesus Christ is our example of love, that's what it means to be a Christian. That is Christian love, to love unconditionally. There's a word for it. It's called agape love, right? It's kind of a funny word, but that agape love means unconditional love. And that is the kind of love that God has for us. So on both ends, if you're, you know, lost in the world or you feel confused, I encourage you, you know, um, ask for prayer. Reach out to people. I, I, I make myself available to you as well. You know, if you have questions or anything, you know, I would love to, to talk to you. You know, my ladies out there, all my sisters in Christ, you know, and also my message to other Christians is, is um, you know, kick back on the, the whole judgment thing and, and, and kick back on the sitting there arguing on Facebook over whose, uh, you know, idea of the word is right and whose is wrong. You know, in Second Timothy, the the. The word of God tells us that sitting there arguing over the law is fruitless. It has no point, you know, and the same thing if we're sitting out there um, without love being the uh, base of our actions and our words, everything we say and do to everybody is, is meaningless, you know, without love behind it. When you speak, when you try to speak into somebody's life, nobody's going to understand you. Nobody's going to be hearing you. You know what I'm saying? So. I want to encourage my fellow Christians out there to really look to Jesus, look at him as the example. How did he reach out to people? And let's uh, let's be examples of that. And let's let's love. Let's love as Christ loved. And I just want to finish with uh, saying that I love you all. And I ask for forgiveness from anybody that I may have wronged in the past. I know I have. Like I said, I'm not a perfect person and I don't ever claim to me. But um, my strength and my joy and my everything, my love uh, comes from Christ. And, um, you know, I apologize for anything that I may have done. I do love you guys. I love you guys deeply with all of my heart. And um, my goal and my mission is to um, bring people to Jesus. And I really hope that these videos go, uh, go as far to minister to people at that capacity. And uh, I just want to tell you, thank you for watching. Um, all these videos are part of a series that are going to a ministry that my sister Christina Luna and I are starting called the Model Ministry. And Model stands for Mirroring Our Daddy's Everlasting Love. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, so Mirroring Our Daddy's Everlasting Love. That's the Model Ministry. And we're going to be, uh, you know, having online videos like this. We're going to have Bible studies and we're going to be creating a website called modelministries.com as well as a Facebook page. So be on the lookout for that. I uh, thank you for your time. Remember, take the time today and show somebody love, you know, smile, give a hug, ask how somebody's doing, show love and, and you'll be blessed. God bless you and have a great day.